let's take up the topic of inheritance uh, first of all i would like to take up the protected visibility mode in inheritance right uh, we have already seen the public and private visibility modes now in protected visibility mode supposing this is your base class and here you have the derived class right now supposing in the base class you have uh, this public and i write here int a and i have a function here display suppose right and then i have the protected section in protected i have int b and i write void calculate right and there is a private section here which has int c and i write void get details something like this right now supposing this is the base class and derive this derived class is uh, inheriting from this base class right okay so now what will happen supposing i say this derived class is uh, having the uh, this uh, protected visibility mode right okay now here when we have a protected visibility mode in that case protected visibility mode here now what happens is this public and protected right both of them will go into the derived class and the public and protected both will become protected here so all this int a void display int b and void calculate all the all the data members and these functions will become protected and obviously the private data members and the member functions will go as private only right so in this case if i make a void main method here and i make an object of the derived class so supposing i say derived obj1 right this is the object of the derived class now in this case the derived class object will not be able to access any of these members because all of them are protected here if i had kept the visibility mode as public in that case it would have been able to access a and display these two right these a and display would have been accessible if the visibility mode had been public because in public visibility mode the public section goes as public only to the derived class but here we have taken it as protected visibility mode which means the public variables also become protected so the protected data members and member functions will not be accessible to objects of the derived class right in this case if the derived class had some public section of its own only that would be accessible int d suppose i say and then i say void new display or something like that right now these two will be accessible to the object obj1 here right so in a way i am making the base class data members and member functions as protected by giving the protected visibility mode to the derived class right so this is how a protected visibility mode works
now the next thing that we we'll look at is the constructors in multiple inheritances you should know how the constructors and destructors are called when we implement the concept of inheritance right so that is what we are going to look at here supposing i have a base class supposing i call it as base uh, i call it as super 1 right now inside this i have okay let me put it like this inside this i have int a b and then i have this protected sections where i put int c and i say void enter details and then i have public in public now i'm going to make a constructor of this class and inside the constructor i say int number comma int amount right okay now inside this constructor i write a is equal to number and b is equal to amount like this right this is a constructor and after the constructor you may have uh, some uh, member function supposing i say display right so let's say this is my super class that is the base class now here i am going to put one more base class i call it as super 2 okay here i say int x y and then again i have supposing i don't have any protected section here i just put a public section and inside the public section i make the constructor for this particular class and here this is a constructor without any parameters right and here i say x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 20 so i just need to make a constructor and initialize some values right okay okay now uh, here you have void um calculate salary something like this okay this is my next class now i'm going to make a derived class here and this derived class is going to act this derived class is going to inherit from both the base classes that are super 1 and super 2 so here i write super 2 comma public super 1 look at the way i have written this i have written public super 2 then super 1 right okay okay now here i take this int m and in the public section i have to make an uh, constructor of this now inside this constructor supposing i here derived and i say int l comma int p comma int q hmm like this and i here i write super 2 super 2 no parameters is required comma super 1 here i have to pass two parameters so i pass this p and q right and inside this i write m is equal to l okay right now i have a destructor here in fact uh, 
this is a distractor of this uh, derived class here I am not putting any coding there I am just putting the destructor and I have a function which is void show right now one more thing which I want to incorporate in all the classes is uh, I want to put a destructor in all the classes so before actually closing the class here after this void display uh, I need to put a destructor for this class also for this class also right okay so here I will put the destructor this is your destructor super one right I'm not writing any coding there um, again here this is super two this is a destructor fine okay now this is complete now let's move to the main method now this is where your order of invocation comes now in the main method we have to make an object of the derived class now if you look at the derived class constructor i am supposed to pass three parameters into this right so i i have to pass three integer parameters so i say 10 comma 11 comma 12 something like this okay and then sorry derived uh, Here, derived obj1 and here I write 10 comma 11 comma 12 okay now obj1 dot show because here show was a public method there and then I write return uh, then I close the main method that's it right okay first of all what will happen when you now the output of the program this is what we are concerned at when i invoke when i make an object of this uh, derived class here right it takes me to this place this derived constructor right this derived class is inheriting from super 2 and super 1 that is the order fine so what will happen here is it will call the constructor of super 2 first here i'm here i'm passing he, here I am calling the constructor of super 2 and then I am calling the constructor of super 1 with these two variables. Understood? Right? P and Q. So, what will happen? This will call the constructor of super 2. So, super 2 will get constructed first, then super 1 and then this derived class. Okay? So, here I will just write this. Here, uh, super 2 constructor will be called first then super 1 constructor will be called and then the derived constructor will be called this will be the order of the constructor when I come to the destructor that is when the program ends when we come to the destructor part the destructor works the opposite way so when you when when the destructor invokes itself it is it destructs the derived class first and then it destructs the object of super 1 and then it destructs the object of super 2 it works like this right so this you have to understand that whenever we have a super class and derived class the super class constructor will always be called first and then the derived class constructor will be called whereas in the case of a destructor the destructor will destruct the derived class object first and then it will move upwards right so constructor is from the top to the bottom and destructor is bottom to top so with that i come to the end of the topic on this um, constructors and multiple inheritance uh, so that's it for today bye